was like, damn, I was that big. Yeah. This is it's only. I wasn't a small guy. Yeah, this is only. How long ago was it? Uh, May of 2020. So what are you looking at right now? Let's tell the audience what you're looking at on your phone. Uh, currently looking at a picture of myself from May of 2020, since we we're discussing like where where you've I, come, where I've come from. So if I look back at guys, this is Carl. Carl is a member at my gym, Cross the Mountain Island. Um, if we look back, the day we met was March 20th, 2021. Right. Does that sound right? Yep. You're looking at a picture from May 2020. Right. Right. What do you remember? What got you? I remember when you came into the gym for your consultation, your NSI, your motivating factor was your daughter and your girlfriend and being a good influence for them. Right. Right. But do you remember what got you from that picture in May 2020 to in the gym in March 2021? So in February of 2021, I had the opportunity to go to Vail and go skiing for a couple of days. And yeah. I went out to Colorado with the intention of like skiing. And I'm an East Coast skier. I've skied pretty much my entire life. And I got out there and the first day on the mountain, it felt like I was dying. And I'm like, you know, I've always been physically active, maybe not necessarily physically fit to the, the metric of fit I am today, but yeah. I've been physically active and I got out there and I just felt like I was dying. <laughs> like you just couldn't breathe, your Could, muscles couldn't handle it? Um, well, black diamond and 13 inches of powder in Vail is not the same as where I come from in West Virginia. Right. It just is. Yeah. I but, believe you. <laughs> but the difference is I've always been like, you know, an advanced skier by, or at least intermediate. Of course. You right, know, right. so, and I get out there and I just feel kind of like a novice again. I can't breathe. I'm on top of this mountain. And I'm like, I'm not this out of shape. Right. And telling myself it's just oxygen. Yeah, 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 for sure. You know, being at 13,000 feet is a lot different than yeah. being at sea level or at least a couple hundred feet. Right. So as I'm experiencing that, I was like, all right, cool. And my best, like one of my best friends um, that I met through my dad, who I'm on this trip with, um, we're just get beat up the first day, both of us, you know, form, he was a former CrossFit gym owner. Yeah. And I, you know, had messed around with his gym a couple of times and sitting there, we're having lunch, we're both gassed. Yeah. And like, just both lying to ourselves that it's just 100%. Man, awesome. this oxygen deprivation is real. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. <laughs> so you're sitting there and like, just kind of selling this story back and forth. And I was like, you know what, man? And he, then he talked about like training when he was like at peak performance, riding mountain bikes out there, which I love mountain biking too. Yeah. And I was like, I don't know if I can do it at this altitude. Oh, what? Yeah. You know, so on and so forth. And then we like kind of came back home and I was like, you know what? I'm going to take this time and really commit. That was February of this year. Yeah. Really commit to my health. Hmm. What know? did that look like? Like what, when you think of, so health is subjective, right? Yeah. When you think of committing to your health, what did that and what does that mean to you specifically? So I've been a severe asthmatic my entire life. I've been medication dependent since I was two. Um, there hasn't been a day in my life where I haven't gone without struggles of breathing of some sort. So that has always kind of like been a fear of mine when it comes to exercise and why like my parents didn't necessarily push hmm too hard in the sports realm. I played sports as a child. I played, you know, baseball and soccer, but not to the level that I probably could have because everybody was afraid of my issues. And it's a major scar tissue from an incident at birth in my left lung is part of it. Yeah. Um, however, like it's never stopped me from being me. Right. Like, you know, it's just take a puff off the inhaler and go do it. For sure. Know? So, and I think when I think of health in general, it's, um, I didn't know what my answer was until I walked in here, which is kind of surprising. Um, but I would say then I defined health as like being in a little better shape, being able to do cardiovascular exercises for a little longer, yeah. being able to, you know, feel more comfortable in my clothing. Sort of like this kind of vague notion, right. but you could really get your hands on it. I knew it was to be a little better than it currently was. That's what I would define health as then. And I think like you have something very powerful painted on the wall here that when I walked in, I went, 
Hmm. And like the very first day I walked in, you guys were doing the CrossFit open mm-hmm. exercises and on the wall behind everybody doing these crazy movements is this painting of your mantra here. Right. That like that in and of itself just stood out to me. Do you have it, do you have it memorized? It is physically strong, mentally sound. Or mentally tough. Mentally tough and it. spiritually sound. Yeah. That's and it. like thinking of that as overall health, like, um, I've experienced a lot of external adversity in my life as far as being mentally tough. Like um, a lot of people don't associate certain things with being that, but having good mental health, having good physical health and good spiritual health makes you a well-rounded individual. And for a long time, like there's a a book I like that kind of the main character defines himself in three parts and to be a well-rounded individual, like the individual that can function he has to feed all three of those parts. Hmm. And one of those is like a mental, you know, I'm a thinker. And one of those is a physical where he's this kind of savage. And then one of them is like this modern man who, you know, has a touch with his family and some sort of spirituality. And as long as he maintains a healthy relationship between all three of those parts of himself, he's a very sound individual. What's that book called? It's, it's uh, the book series about Joe Ledger. Huh. It's called the Joe Ledger series. It's by Jonathan Mayberry. It's kind of like a Jack Reacher type. It's cool. I like that. Deal. Well, who's the author? Jonathan Mayberry. Hmm. So you're, you feel like maybe you, your perception of health, maybe didn't change, but you got more clarity on it. Right. Like, and I think that I was doing an okay job at maybe feeding one aspect of myself. Hmm. Interesting. And I was like beginning to realize that and like, okay, if I'm touching on the modern man or the family man, you know, I'm working on my relationship, with my partner, my child, that's awesome. But what have I done for, you know, my mental health and what have I done for my physical health? Hmm. And, you know, I do get a lot of mental health benefits from coming here and just doing physical stuff. Right. Um, it's part of the reason I chose the class that I choose to come to is, you know, I go to work, get all stressed out yeah, <laughs> then come here and just kind of let that go for an hour and just like grind through the suffer of the day. And whether it was mentally at work and I just come here and do something physical to push that out. Right. Or if it's, if it wasn't that tasking and I come here and I have to do something mentally tasking, hmm. you know, right. like some of these exercises are, they're not hard movements. Yeah. They're not bitter, painful movements. Right. They're just, you got to be mentally tough enough yeah. to sit for 20 minutes. In yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like yesterday and you leveled oh, yeah. up, right? Yeah. That's yeah. awesome, dude. You freaking like, crushed it. It's, it's like, those are the days like where you have to have that mental check. And like also the environment here, like yeah. people here make that a lot easier. Like, yeah, like doing that yesterday and Megan's like, give me five more. <laughs> I'm like, I only got two. <laughs> I don't want to do five. I got all five. I bet you did. But that was like, you know, and you break those boundaries and you cross those thresholds and you find these new, new metrics hmm. to hit. That's cool. So I think that's the definition of health I have is like working on all three aspects of those to be a well-rounded human. Uh, and I think it'll evolve and change more yeah. the further I get down this path. But I think those are very good building blocks. Interesting. I agree with that. The, um, the path's never straight and it always surprises you. But if you're always moving down it, you're making progress. Right. And that's um that's definitely a constant. What um so you've been here for since March, so that's almost let me call it nine months. Yeah. What do you feel like was your in that nine month stretch that you can think back on? What was the biggest challenge you feel like you faced and overcame? whether it was walking in the door to come talk to me or whether it was like your first week in classes, like what do you feel like was the hardest thing looking back? If you can get your hands on it. Um, I would say probably walking in the door. Hmm. Uh, that would probably be the first hardest thing. But then you encounter things that, you know, okay, that wasn't that bad. I made it here. And yeah. It's like sitting in <clears throat> one of my first classes doing sit-ups. I thought I could do sit-ups. Yeah. We're doing weighted sit-ups. Right. Oh, this is- and then I'm like, Noel was coaching that night. I remember it. 
I had a five pound plate in my hand and I couldn't do a sit up. Yeah. And she's like, sling your arms. <laughs> you <laughs> no, 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 try it. harder. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much. And yeah. I'm like, come on now. And yeah. then like look, turning around. And the moment that I remembered this was just like a week or two ago where I'm sitting here with a 20 pound wall ball in my yeah. hands crushing 50 sit ups. Yeah, dude. Not, that's insane. You know, and that's, so it's, it's hard as a relative term too. Yeah, that's true. Um, but the, the hardest part was probably the first step saying, Hey, I thought I knew how to do this. Mm -hmm. That humility. Yeah. Like, and I think I've encountered that a lot in my life is thinking that I'm capable of something and like just grinding at it consistently for a long time and getting nowhere. And then hmm. like, all right, you know, I've been at hiking up this mountain and going back down 10 times now. Like, yeah. Maybe there's a guy. Maybe there's a Sherpa I can find. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like where's the there's a Sherpa somewhere. Where, yeah, which yeah. trail should I be on right now? And right. like having, like coming in and saying, Hey, I'm like I said, I felt as though I had a pretty decent base of understanding like physical being physically active. Um, but then like coming in and realizing, okay, I was kind of, physical. I was kind of physically sure. active rather than I was physically. Have you noticed a change to your uh, asthma? Yes. Really? It was, uh, so for an entire month, like there are seasons. Sure. I'm, I'm sure. Affected by allergies too. Um, actually, the surprising thing is I don't have exercise induced asthma. I have allergy induced asthma. Interesting. Okay. So being coming in and being physical out here very rarely affects me. Mm -hmm. um, it's actually kind of beneficial because it kind of forces the lungs to push the carbon dioxide out, which hmm. is what asthma is. And you can respirate and inhale as much as possible. It's just your lungs have a really hard time expelling what is inside of them. Hmm. So you build up really high levels of carbon dioxide. Hmm. It's uncomfortable, but it's not miserable. Um, but being here during my lung capacity, I would say is phenomenally better than it's ever been. Um, I had a month where I was only on my inhaled steroid, didn't even use my restroom. Oh, wow. So Hell yeah. like just con kind of the maintenance medicine right. was doing its job without support from anything else. That's cool. Uh, it's the first time in the last five years of my life that I've been to a doctor and my, because of this medication it does affect your blood pressure, that my blood pressure was normal. <laughs> wow. They, like, Hell yeah. So they weren't even like trying to push. It's like, Hey man, usually like my deal was yeah. like, let me give you like some six, blood pressure meds, yeah. six months to practice, like getting my health in check. Yeah. And then you could put me on it. It yeah. was still bad. And it was like within the first 90 days of being here was the first time I went to the doctor and like, it was normal. And I was like, that's a good feeling. It's like, yeah. And then the second time was in early October. I went back to the doctor cause I felt like I was having issues yeah. and it was just vertigo from like probably something in my ear. Mm. And I felt like it was my blood pressure and my blood pressure was like perfect. And I'm hmm. like, all right, it wasn't just one. <laughs> it's just a trend. Yeah, yeah. So it wasn't a fluke. So I would say that my cardiovascular health is drastically improved and like my asthma is drastically improved. That's cool. Um, I would say, uh, just kind of the movements and the cardiovascular health do translate to other things hmm. like I've seen an improvement in just like recreational mountain biking too. Yeah. I bet, you know, things you enjoy doing. Yeah. My old man's always put me in the hurt box when it comes to that. Yeah. And like this year for my birthday, we did an entire weekend at a couple of different places. And like the last day it was like the very first time I've ever beat him on this one particular course. Wow. That's so cool. He was like, what do you think of that? Yeah. I would, that's pretty much, I rubbed it in. Yeah. I go here. Yeah. Yeah. Know? I mean, like he was on me at the end. Sure. And it's to be expected. He's been doing it a lot longer than I have. Sure. But it was like, I didn't, I didn't give up. Yeah. You know, it's like that last two minutes of yeah. suffer. Yeah. You had that, you had the gas tank to go. Yeah. And it was like, all right, I'm going to sit here for a little bit. This isn't fun, but yeah. I'm not going to let you pass me yeah. in this last I can like, tolerate this. 150 meters. So yeah. I got this. Hell yeah. So it was, that was cool. So overall, I think I've, like you said, like, what was the hardest part? is just taking individual steps hmm. and then like not allowing yourself to get them into comfort zones. Hmm. Interesting. So like here, like you can easily find yourself 
well, I'm not going to push myself too far because I'm afraid of this. Sure. Or I'm afraid of this. And I think the support and the coaching that you provide, like, you know, all the coaches here provide are, you know, hey, I am kind of struggling with this injury or yeah. this or that, but how close can I get to this movement? Right. How close can I get to making these muscles work? What's the next best thing? And I think having, like, rather than just going, oh, my, sh- my shoulder's a bum shoulder, I'll never do that again. Yeah, it's yeah. like, just how from close it. can I get to, like, pushing it? Right. And I think, like, so just not being afraid to... Use your body. Overcome, yeah. And, like, okay, if I can't, if today I can't do this, what, how close can I get to that? Hmm. Versus just giving up on the idea of it. Right. And I think that happens a lot. I think I, that's what I was going to say. I think it happens a lot in society in general. Like people are like, well, you know, I weigh X or I can't do X or I can't be X. And rather than saying, what's the next best thing they go, all right, I'm just not going to try. They just close that chapter of their life or close that book and then move on to something else. Right. Just ignore it. Yeah. <laughs> rather than like, all right, if I can't do a, maybe I can do B. Hmm. And if I get really good at B, then maybe I can cheat A a little bit. Yeah. All right. All right. Right. And get closer. <laughs> yeah. I like close that marginal gap. Right. And I think that's one thing I have learned here too. What do you feel like if you can like pick something like in the past nine months, how do you feel like you've changed personally since making your, like your health a priority or starting CrossFit, whatever you attribute the growth to? Where do you feel like you've grown the most in the past nine months? Or how would you explain it? Mm. Well, one, I'm more physically capable, but also, I guess, like, the tributes. Maybe um, I can make that, like, articulate that better. Are there, is there personal growth you've seen that you didn't expect? So, like, like, when you join a gym, you expect to lose weight. You hope to lose weight in general people do yeah. and you expect to get stronger and fitter. So like those things are not a given because those things don't just happen. You have to work with those, but I'm curious if you can, if there are ways and it might be those two ways. Um, but like if there are ways other than those that you feel like you've grown or changed, oh, they, they maybe caught you by surprise. I guess I would say I could highlight two. Um, I think that become a better friend hmm. and more apt to, you know, have this real desire to teach, hmm. um, just by nature. And I think this is like, not like realizing how ignorant I am to certain things has allowed me to like, okay, well, I, you thought you were cap- capable of physical activity right? and you realized you weren't. So why don't you be patient in this moment with, other individuals around hmm. you and maybe, you know, let them kind of convey, you know, maybe there was not like to be a, a great friend, you have to be a great listener. And then like certain times, I think when in the past I may have, you know, wanted to, you know, insert my opinion or insert my thoughts or ideas or whatever, I think like being humbled to the point of, you know, not being able to breathe, <laughs> like, is like one of those things where it's like, okay, well, maybe in this moment I do need to hold my breath mm. and let somebody else kind of convey their idea in a, in a different way. And instead of, you know, attacking it, like I said, directly, you know, maybe getting close to that thought in an, another way. Right. You know, it's like, okay, well, maybe you're, sh- you're verbally have a bum shoulder right now and you're just not explaining this mm. rather than me inserting my idea in here. Let me come at it and ask a new question. I would say that's one. That's cool. And that's good because you're like, you're in a leadership role in your, at your job. So yeah. I'm, that's interesting. And I've heard, I've heard you tell me stories about work that I could see that playing out. And then two, um, I never saw myself like growing in a manner where I would want to compete hmm. in anything as an adult. Yeah. And, you know, it's some of the relationships that have been formed, like 
doing a comp like yeah. a house competition. Yeah, with Joseph, that was cool. Yeah, we're running two five k. Yeah, I've never done that in my life before either. And I, after the very first one, uh, Kelly and I, another member at the gym here, like she crossed the finish line, gave her a big hug. Yeah, and I was like, that was fun. Yeah, right. You know, it wasn't a five k was fun versus. Yeah. And it's like when I sit back and I look at my early to mid twenties, I would have never said getting up Saturday morning at yeah. six a.m. Right. And going to run in the cold. Yeah. Would be fun. Right. But um, it was the test of getting out there and just doing the work, and then also like seeing that sense of accomplishment on her face when she crossed the finish line that day was like, I can't see my own face. Yeah. <laughs> so, right. That's but the next like, best thing. Yeah, like <laughs> I got to see a friend do something great. Yeah, you know, so that was. Those are two things I would say that, you know, being humble enough to listen more. Because I did realize I don't know as much, maybe, and then also like pushing myself in the pursuit of just being better outside of the gym. You know, whether that is the competitions a CrossFit competition or a 5k, but even just, you know, pushing myself in my life that direction. It's like, okay, well, what's your goal? How do you get there? Hmm. You got to show up and do the work, right? But you can, sometimes it's fun. Yeah. You can enjoy the process. Yeah. Sometimes the work does is just fun. Yeah. Even though, you know, most people don't look at work that way. Right. I do think that's something that separates people that I see coming to come to the doors here that separates those that find success and find progress and that don't is the ones that stick around and, and accomplish what they want to accomplish are the ones that find joy and enjoy the process and the, the challenge that come with the process, as opposed to the ones that fixate on the end result, you know, we're the, uh, yeah, like, like getting to a goal line is great and all. And I don't think it's like even just the end result or the moment in which you do it. Just both of those could. It's suck. fleeting. Like, yeah. yeah. It's fleeting. Yeah. It's a fleeting. Like they could both just be, you know, my push up game is yeah. still trash. Ah, it's getting better though. <laughs> it, it, yeah, it is. I've been doing this. We, for yeah, bench press today. So I've been doing this for nine months and like I get frustrated every time I go to try and be yeah. better at that. I'm, I am better at, you're better at it though. Yeah. I am better at it, but it still doesn't mean I'm great. And if I fixated on the fact that I wanted to be at the goal line, yeah. which is this right benchmark, like I could just obsess, lose on myself to that. Yeah. And then like either hyper focus on that until I like cause an injury sure. or like, get defeated to the point where I don't do it again. Right. Other than just understanding that I'm just in a place of growth yeah. and I'm not growing as fast as I want to. Right. Like in some time, that's life. Yeah. Like the speed in which something occurs sometimes may just be out of your control. Yeah. And like oftentimes you have to just be present and doing it to eventually get there. And it, and you will. Yeah. <laughs> it's just, Maybe not when you want to. Yeah, it should take a little bit of time. Yeah, I agree. That's a that's a good way to put it. What um, looking forward, and we'll wrap it up so you can get to class and get your workout in. Looking forward to like twenty twenty two, where where are your goals or where are your eyes? Like, what is your goal in the next few months going into next year? Like, what are you working on right now besides push ups? Push ups. <laughs> um. Same dude. Same. That workout last week, I was sore for like I, eight days. I guess I would say overall, what I'm working on is like um, just being present for the the next step of the growth that I'm trying to reach, which is to be like kind of back to just your mantra here, like all three aspects of those. Like I'm I'm looking forward to being physically stronger. I'm looking forward to being more mentally tough. I'm being looking forward to being more spiritually sound and like working on, you know, that family type relationship, my mm -hmm. daughter and my partner working on the physical aspect of coming here. And like, you know, I really appreciate the method in which 
you have it set up as far as like, you know, progressing through each of these levels. So yeah. like looking forward to like leveling up in yeah, that dude. aspect, but also like, and to give you guys some context, we have a system here called the level method where it's basically like uh, the belt system in karate and jujitsu. So you have like levels that you progress to in your fitness. And like, as we like, so obviously leveling up is big, but I also want to see like, you know, that first competition, you know, it's, you're this close. Mm -hmm. It's like how much better can I be yeah. next time around? So, right. Um, looking at those overall, um, and then, you know, in the mental aspect of this too, is being able to come in and maybe at some point touch somebody else's life, you know, yeah. be that, that person, that role model, that individual that, you know, gives the fist pump at the end of the day or, you know, pick somebody up off the floor when they're down. Yeah. Being a leader as much as you can. As much as I can. Yeah. Some days I don't want to be a leader. <laughs> yeah, dude. That some days, that some days is right. But it feels good when you see that person smile and they cross the finish line at the 5K. Yeah, it does. To be there for that, I guess. To be there for that moment. Yeah. Is what I look forward to in 2022. Don't know who that moment's going to be with, but looking forward to that moment. Hopefully there's many moments like that. Let's end it. I'm going to have you read my quote on my computer. It's my favorite right now. What a man actually needs is not a tensionless state, but rather the striving and struggling for some goal worthy of him. What he needs is not the discharge of tension at any cost, but the call of a potential meaning waiting for to be fulfilled by him. And it's Victor Frankl. Yep. Is that from A Man's Search of Meaning? Yeah. It's, it's a great book. That was like my, my first book I read that got me into this whole like self-development process. It's a good book. It's a good one. His ability to find grace in the darkest, the darkest possible places. All right, brother. Thank you for your time. Yeah. And your insight. No problem. I'm going to let you go bench press with your friends. See you. See you guys. Thanks, girl.